moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity, or MVPA, is associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we can see here. So on the y-axis, we've got the adjusted HRs, which is the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality, otherwise known as all-cause mortality risk. And on the x-axis, we've got total moderate to vigorous physical activity volume in minutes per week. Now, MVPA raises a few questions. First, how was MVPA calculated? In this study, it was calculated via accelerometry, which was worn on the wrist. Now, an accelerometer is a device that can detect the intensity of motion, which then raises another question. How was moderate to vigorous physical activity defined? Now, uh, MVPA was uh, defined as activity that was greater than three METs per minute for at least 10 minutes. But that raises then another question which exercises are greater than three METs per minute. So I've posted a short list here. And if you're interested in the full list for METs or metabolic equivalents of task, that link will be in the video's description. So what we can see is that walking slowly or more specifically at two miles per hour would have METs that were less than three METs per minute. So that would not be included in the definition of MVPA for the study. But in contrast, walking three miles an hour, stationary cycling at 50 or 100 watts, a leisurely bike ride, light to moderate calisthenics, or a heavy weightlifting workout would each have METs that were greater than three METs per minute, so they will be included in this definition of MVPA for this study. All right, so now back to our data. So how is MVPA volume in minutes per week associated with all-cause mortality risk? And what, so to, to assess that, we go to a hazard ratio of one. And remember where the shaded region is completely below one, as in this study, or above one, we would have a statistically significant association. And what we can see is that up to about 175 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week, there's about a 65% reduction for all-cause mortality risk. Well, what about higher than 100, about 175 minutes of MVPA per week? Well, there's a bit of a plateau. So people that get more than about 175 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise per week did not have a further reduction for all-cause mortality risk relative to about 175 minutes per week. Now, note that these data are derived from moderate to vigorous physical activity that are performed at any time during the day. And the reason we're here is to ask the question, does exercise timing impact all-cause mortality risk? Or more specifically, is there a time of day for moderate to vigorous physical activity that may be best for health? So in this study, they looked at three time points, including morning, which was defined as from 5 in the morning to 11 in the morning, midday to afternoon, so 11 in the morning until 6 at night, and then in the evening from 6 at night until midnight. And then when going to the data, we've once again got the adjusted hazard ratio for all-cause mortality or all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis, but in this case, the x-axis is now different. We've got the fraction of moderate to vigorous physical activity within each of these three time windows. So what we can see first is that spending up to 50% of total moderate to vigorous physical activity time at these three different time points, we have sig a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk. So first, when looking at the shaded blue region and the median line for midday to afternoon, we can see a significantly decreased all-cause mortality risk relative to a hazard ratio of one, but then also for the morning and the evening groups that performed about half of their workouts in each of these three time points, there was a significant reduction for all-cause mortality risk. As we can see, the shaded blue region for all three time points is below one. In other words, a mixed approach for exercise timing, so not doing exclusively all of your exercise within any of these time points, a mixed approach up to 50% was associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. But where it gets interesting is for people who spent more than 50% of their total exercise time at one or more of these time points. So what I mean by that is, for example, for people who perform more than 50% of their total moderate to vigorous physical activity in the midday to afternoon group, we see a significant reduction for all-cause mortality risk as indicated by the double green arrows. However, that was not true for people that perform more than half of their total moderate to vigorous physical activity in the morning or in the evening, which suggests that midday to afternoon performing the majority of exercise time or a moderate to vigorous physical activity in the midday to afternoon may be best for reducing all-cause mortality risk. So as a limitation of that, uh, this is an association. So is this a correlation 
or is it causation? So to address that, we'll have to wait for randomized controlled trials to see if doing your training only in the midday afternoon may be better for health and reducing all-cause mortality relative to doing the majority of your exercise or your uh, vigorous workouts in the morning or evening. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including any dequantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so that link and all of the other links for the discounts will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.